She trained her entire life to prepare for this emergency. My first thoughts were actually, oh, here we go, just because it seemed like a uh, a flashback to some of the Navy flying that we had done. The former Navy flyer and her co-pilot Darren Ellisor sat with ABC's Martha Raddatz for their first interview since last month's doomed flight. They were cruising at 30,000 feet when the left engine blew apart. Debris flew into a window and passenger Jennifer Reardon was sucked halfway out. It was a, a bit of a rough shutter. The whole thing was shaking? Mm-hmm. Yes. A lot. Yes. It was so loud in the cockpit, the pilots say they couldn't hear each other. We had to use hand signals um, because it was loud and there was, uh, it was just hard to communicate. And yet, in all that chaos, they showed the right stuff and kept their cool. There was no fear in that cockpit. There was only, I need to land this plane. I have someone on this plane who was injured. I want to get the rest of the passengers down there safely. It was really just back to flying, aviate, communicate, navigate. In the Navy, there's a saying, whatever it takes. Is your airplane physically on fire? No, it's not on fire, but part of it's missing. There's a hole and someone went out. And get that this, was Tammy Jo wasn't even supposed to be flying on that fateful day. She switched shifts with her husband, Dean, who also pilots for Southwest, so she could attend her 18-year-old son's track meet. Dean said, OK, I'll switch with you. Tammy Jo says, I'm never switching with him anymore. Many of the passengers were sure they were goners, even recording farewell messages to their loved ones. But those steady hands in the sky made sure they got home. Did you worry you might not make it? No. Never. No.